Hey everyone, thanks for joining. It's great to see you again. So today we've got a real treat for those of you who love to hand code your XAML because we'll be going over none other than the official Noesis extension for Visual Studio Code. We'll cover how to get it installed on your machine and we'll also go over some of the coolest features that it offers, such as a super robust auto-completion helper, which makes typing your code an absolute breeze, as well as really excitingly, a preview system, which allows you to see interfaces in progress, not only within Visual Studio Code itself, but also within the engine of your choice. So let's go ahead and get this started, get everything set up, and then we'll start making something really cool. So we'll be starting our journey together today within Visual Studio Code. And our very first step will be to install the official Noesis extension. We can do this by navigating to the left side of the application window and going to the extensions tab, which you can also access by hitting Control Shift X on your keyboard. In our case, however, let's go ahead and click on it. A drawer will appear, and the easiest way to find the Noesis extension will be to simply head to the search box at the very top of the panel and type Noesis. The extension will then appear in the list of results, and you have the option to install it directly from here, or you can click on the entry and view it within the context of its page. Let's go ahead and press the Install button. That is now installed, as easy as that, and we will go ahead and close this window and close this drawer by pressing Control B. We are now ready to go. For our next step, we're going to go ahead and open a blank XAML file that we've created ahead of time. To do this, we'll navigate to File, Open File, find our main menu.xaml, and press Open. Now, if you're familiar with the layout of VS Code, you'll notice that there is a brand new button in the upper right-hand corner of the screen titled Open XAML Preview. If we were to press this now, there would be nothing to show because this is a blank document. So, as a first step, let's go ahead and create some UI and then see what happens when we press that button. So as we begin composing our XAML, there's already a really cool feature that I want to show you, and that's what happens when you press Control Spacebar on the keyboard. What you'll see is you'll be served a list of items that we're able to place within our current context. In the case of creating a new document, root grid is perfect. Let's go ahead and select that. Amazing. So we now have enough to continue composing our document. We're going to go ahead and create a view box. Now within this view box, we're going to have a grid of width of 1920 and height of 1080. We're then going to create three rows within this grid. So we're going to do grid.row definitions. And within this, we are going to place three rows. Now, we want these to be equally sized rows, and that's why we're not setting a value for these, because this is the equivalent of setting three rows of value of one star each. Next, let's just go ahead and take a moment to polish some of our presentation of our code just to make our life a little bit easier in terms of navigating this. This will include adding some comments. So we will go ahead and set a master here. And within this grid, we are going to get ready to receive the image that we'll be placing in. So this will be the scene back. Within this, we're going to go ahead and create a grid. And we will go ahead and set this to span the entire height of the page. So we're going to want to go from the very top of the screen, which will be row zero. And we're going to have it go row span of three. Amazing. Next, we can go ahead and place our image within this. So we're going to do image, and the most important thing of an image is going to be the source. And we will go ahead and refer to scene underscore back dot PNG. And we will take advantage of being here to set a stretch to uniform to fill. At this point, we're actually able to go see what has happened in the XAML preview window. So let's go ahead and do that. So now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's go ahead and navigate to the upper right hand corner of the application window and click on that open XAML preview button. Boom. Nature. Amazing. So what's really special about this in particular is that we're now going to be able to continue writing our XAML code while seeing all of the changes that we type reflected in that right side XAML preview window. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. The next element that we're going to add is we're going to add what we're going to call our hero text. And what this is going to be is going to be a piece of text that spans across this background. So let's go ahead and place it within a grid, first of all. We're going to set the row to be row zero because we want it to be in the top third of the screen. Next, let's go ahead and set a text block. And this text is going to read welcome in all caps. And we'll also give it a very generous font size of 340 before closing that and seeing it appear on the right side of the screen in the XAML preview. And this is going to make our life way, way easier as we go ahead and polish the presentation of this. So we're going to go ahead and set a horizontal alignment to center. 
a vertical alignment to center, and now let's go ahead and work on some of the typography. So we're going to assign a font of bungee inline to this, and we will also assign a foreground color. Now there are a couple ways that you can apply colors. The first is you can actually select from any of the number of preset colors, and you will see in this case aqua will update, but also you can hover over this and change your color by hand by clicking and dragging within the color picker. And this will actually update the hex value inside of the foreground property. In our case, we have a very specific hex value that we want to use for this, so let's go ahead and put that in. Lastly, this is feeling a little bit strong, so let's go ahead and reduce the opacity to 0 0.25. Starting to look kind of cool. And at this point, let's go ahead and head over to Unreal and check out what we can see there. Within the Unreal Engine, let's go ahead and navigate to the content drawer found in the lower left hand corner of the application. When I click this to open it, we will find the exact same folder that we've been working out of in Visual Studio Code. You'll even see mainwindow.xaml present here. However, to get our interface to preview within Unreal, we need to load this level that contains this. So let's go ahead and double click on this to load it. You'll see that the scene has changed and you'll also get a confirmation of the level being correctly loaded by the active tab in the upper left hand corner showing the correct file. Now to actually preview this, all we need to do is to press on this green playhead icon which says play this level in the active level editor viewport and you can also do this by pressing alt and p on the keyboard. Let's go ahead and click on it however. And there we have our interface. So we're going to go ahead and head back to VS Code and continue working on this and we'll come back and check periodically on the progress that was made here. Now there's a really handy way to go back to VS Code directly from Unreal. If you open the content drawer and right click on your main window.xaml, you have this option to open an external editor. Let's click that. And that will now take us to our VS Code window where we can resume our work. Now, before we go ahead and make our remaining interface elements, I have one more trick up my sleeve for this background. And what I want to do in particular is I want to make it look like this hero text is sandwiched in between some of the mountains. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pump my opacity of the hero text back to 100%. This will be a temporary measure just so we can appreciate the effect before we return it to something a little bit more subtle. The next thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to grab our scene back block and we're going to go ahead and paste this. Let's go ahead and just fix the alignment a little bit. And what we're going to do next is we're going to simply load a different PNG image. This is one called scene front. And now you will see the effect that we're going after where some of the peaks are in front of the text. Cool. Let's go ahead and revert this back to 0 0.25 and that will look exactly as we want it to. So let's go ahead and kick off our work on the remaining interface elements by scrolling down in our page and we're going to give it its very own section, which of course we will call interface. Let's go ahead and create a grid. And it's at this point that we're going to decide where in the screen we want our elements to appear. Now we're going to want them to appear in the lower two thirds of the screen. Therefore, we'll be setting a row of one, a row span of two, and a vertical alignment of center because we want our content to appear vertically centered in that lower two thirds. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a stack panel because our interface components will be composed of a vector logo and right under it, a call to action text that says press start on it. Let's go ahead and then start working on our logo. So I'm actually going to create a custom little section for this with a comment to differentiate it a little bit. And we're going to create a view box. Now I think that this will look good at around 256 by 256. So I'm going to put that in right away. Next, let's go ahead and just create a grid. And we are now going to work on the path, which is actually going to contain the vector data for this. I'm going to permit myself to just copy paste this for the sake of expediency. And we now have it appear on screen looking pretty good. I think that one thing that we might be able to do to improve this a little bit is to add a little bit of a drop shadow on it to make it pop a little bit more from the background. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, we can simply use a path dot effect. And within this, we will find a drop shadow effect. Let's go ahead and close this so we can see the default shadow that it gives us. I think we can do a little bit better than that. So first, let's go ahead and change the color to something custom. We're going to use our green that we've used everywhere else. And we're also going to soften this up a little bit. We're going to do that two ways. The very first is we're going to add a blur radius. And let's go ahead and add one of 64. That's looking a little bit cooler. Next, I think we need to decrease the opacity of this shadow. So we'll go ahead and do opacity of 0 0.25. Now, let's go ahead and save this because I made a promise to you earlier that we would periodically check in on Unreal. So 
Let's go ahead and pop Unreal open, and you'll see that in this lower right hand corner, there is a toast notification that tells us that a change to a source file content has been detected. Would you like to import it? Why, yes, I would like to import it. Let's go ahead and also press this don't ask again button. And then the next time that we drop by here, we won't have to do it at all. Let's go ahead and import though. And there we go. This is now rendering within Unreal. Now, one big advantage of rendering within Unreal is that if your interface uses any Unreal content, it will be able to render in here perfectly. Let's go ahead and finish our interface up. The next thing we want to do is once we have our logo in place, we are also going to want to create our call to action content. So we'll go ahead and just put that in there and let's go ahead and create that. So I think that in this case, we're going to probably have some legibility issues as well. However, instead of solving it with a drop shadow, let's solve it by giving that text a bit of a backer. So we're going to go ahead and create a border. We're also going to set this border to be horizontally aligned to the center. And we're actually going to stop there in terms of the aesthetic customization of this border. The reason for this is because many of our metrics for this are actually going to come from the text block that's within it. So the next logical step for us is going to be to create the text block. So the text is going to say, press start. We're also going to go ahead and just close this off so we can start to see the changes on the screen. It's appeared there. It nudged the logo a little bit up. It's a little bit small though. So let's go ahead and just change the font size to let's say 32. We're also going to give it a custom font family. So we'll be using the same font as before, but the non inline version. And there it has updated. And last but not least for this text, we will also give it a custom color. So in the case of this, this will be the foreground color. And we'll go ahead and paste that in. Now, very hard to read as predicted. So let's go ahead and move on to the border element. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set a background for this. So let's go ahead and just add that. And we'll use our nice little green that we're used to using. And I think that we can probably improve the presentation a little bit. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of padding on the left and right, just to give that text a little bit more room to breathe. So we'll go ahead and add 24 pixels on the left and right. It's updated. Lastly, I think that this might look nice with a little bit of a corner radius. So let's go ahead and add that. And let's make this, let's say 60. Cool, that's starting to look pretty cool. I think the very last element that we want to adjust is we want a little bit more room between the logo and that call to action. So let's go ahead and add a margin to our logo. We'll do margin and let's add 32 pixels to the bottom. So that'll be zero comma zero comma zero comma 32 and that will nudge it up. Let's go ahead and save. And the very last step that we'll do is we'll also go check out our final result inside of the Unreal Engine. And this time it will update automatically without any action on our part. How cool is that? And so that's it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Hopefully it got you excited to go and install this amazing extension and start having some fun with it. Thank you so much again for joining us. It's always a pleasure and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone.